State lawmakers have struggled for years over what to do about a pest that is an explosive fire hazard, sucks up millions of gallons of water, and spreads like a weed. It's the eastern red cedar tree. And while lawmakers may not have an answer, other Oklahomans are taking steps on their own to come up with some unique solutions. An Oklahoma company makes furniture from the trees, but only about 10% of the trees are big enough for that. Another company that is producing much sought after coffins and caskets made of eastern red cedar, but again, large lumber producing sized trees are needed. The vast majority of the troublesome trees are really small scraggy bushes. At Oklahoma State University, researchers have made an important breakthrough and a new use for the eastern red cedar. Turn it into biofuel. So we use a combination of uh, chemicals, uh, sulfites and sulfuric acid to break that wood down, specifically something called lignin, which is the glue that holds the wood together per se. And then we can get uh, sugars from that. Associate Professor Mark Wilkins and a researcher worked for over two years to develop the process that uses eastern red cedar as feedstock to produce biofuels. Now the work is focused on the economics of taking that process large scale. First you have to get the amount of chemicals, the amount of water, these, the yields that you'll get uh, in a uh, lab setting or even in a pilot plant setting. We've only done it in the lab here at the university. And then we can take that data and use uh, process models that have been developed already uh, to get cost estimates. Professor Wilkins expects that converting red cedar to ethanol or other biofuels is more expensive than using corn or switchgrass, but there also may be trade-offs. The cost of getting the red cedar, because it's a basically a pest, a waste product, may offset some of those increased processing costs. Then there's the volume that could be produced, which also helps reduce costs. When you talk about biofuels plants, 2,000 tons per day of biomass uh, processed is kind of the benchmark. That's what the goal. Um, so that would that would feed one of those plants, and that I that would probably make about 50 million gallons of ethanol every every day, maybe slightly more. And that's just the output for vehicle fuels. Eastern red cedar can also be broken down into another biofuel for another huge market. And butanol can be converted fairly uh, easily to jet fuel. Professor Wilkins believes his research could be put to use soon. I would hope in the next uh, 10 years this would be going, or if not soon. Paul Todd is president of the Aromatic Cedar Association. We're attempting to find markets for, and homes for, uses for, the abundance of red cedar that we have growing in this state. And they are finding those new markets. In addition to fencing for residences, there are facilities that are grinding up eastern red cedar. To Riverside Ranch General Manager Dominic Ramirez, ground up eastern red cedar is a thing of beauty. And that's really what is beauty about the mulch in our eastern red cedar. You know, one, it's aromatic and beautiful. It, it you know, keep the, it'll reduce the amount of bugs you have, but three, it's just pretty. Ramirez's plant produces four or more ground up wood products at a time. Everything from bedding for animals and pets to mulch to something called LCM, a key product for the oil and gas industry. Paul Todd says the oil industry uses multiple semi loads of the material every day. ACM stands for Lost Circulation Material. It is used to fill in the cracks and fissures that drillers encounter that cause the drilling rig to lose pressure and interfere with the flow of drilling mud. Basically, you take mulch and regrind it down to a much, much finer particle size. And it's fairly particular in particle size. It can't be anything bigger than this size, nothing smaller than that size. So there's this very narrow window of particle size distribution. The ground up cedar along with other woods is forced into the fissures or cracks to restore pressure to the drilling string and return it to operation. At Riverside Ranch, Dominic Ramirez has a huge barn on site filled with ground up wood that his plant will process in just one day. Now we are a totally green company, we are a 100% uh, recyclable company, 
So any of the materials that we use or we bag or any of the items we retrieve are products that were either destined to go uh, to landfills or to be destroyed, like in the eastern red cedar. But Paul Todd at the Aromatic Cedar Association has more plans for the eastern red cedar. Plans that can only happen if state lawmakers see the value in his marketing strategy. The state of Oklahoma buys thousands of uh, post for guardrail post. And most of those are bought out of state. We need to be buying those in state and utilizing cedar. And he has another idea turn the trees into fuel to generate electricity. We're importing coal from Wyoming and burning that to create BTUs. Now, what's wrong with that picture? You know, why aren't we using our own BTUs as opposed to importing BTUs from Wyoming? According to researchers, if Oklahoma were to burn enough cedar trees to produce one billion BTUs of energy a day, the state has enough cedar right now to last 372 years. By the way, one billion BTUs equals the amount of electricity it takes to provide all the needs of 30 average American households for one full year.